What's up, everybody? Welcome to Vader.com. My name is James Murphy from PeaceAndDrums.com, and in this lesson, we're going to be breaking down a quick lick. So the whole idea behind a quick lick is not necessarily what you're going to be playing is easy. It's more in the way that I deliver the information it makes it easy for you guys to translate it back to the kit. So we're going to be going through two simple steps, and I'm going to be giving you all the specific information for this quick lick or fill option. So we're going to talk about the sticking pattern, we're going to talk about the note rate that I use, also the placement of the note rate. We're going to be talking about the dynamic pattern and the voice pattern. We'll go to the whiteboard, we'll break down all those characteristics on the whiteboard so that you guys can see and understand the notation. And then we'll get back to the kit and I'll go through the two steps with you so that you guys can get this idea and apply it to whatever environment that you want, whether it's transitioning the band to the B section or setting up a kick over time. So let's get to the whiteboard and break down this quick lick. All right, guys, so now that you've got a view of our whiteboard, you'll notice I already have a bunch of notation written up on our staff. Remember, the staff are these five lines and four spaces you see here, and our time signature is 4-4. Four, four. We've got a quarter note rest on one, telling us that there's no uh, sticking pattern that's falling on beat number one. It actually falls on beat number two. So the sticking pattern is going to start on beat number two, continue through three and four, and then crash on one of the next bar. And here's our bar line telling us that that is the end of uh, this bar and the start of the next. When you crash on one of the following bar, it's actually going to be with either your right hand or left hand with a crash cymbal and your bass drum with your foot. If we look back to our first group of six 16th note triplets, I just want to point out the notation. I know these are six... Uh, 16th note triplets by the group of six, one, two, three, four, five, six, as well as the bracket that contains those group of six. You can then see the second and third group of 16th note triplets. Remember, 16th note triplets have six notes per pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. If you look below, you'll also see our sticking pattern. Remember, our sticking pattern consists of our right, left, and foot patterns that will create this quick lick. If you look above on the staff, you can see the different voice patterns. So remember, voice patterns are the different parts of the drum set. So in this case, we have our snare drum, which is the second space from the top of the staff. We have our hi-hat, which is the space above the staff. We've got our bass drum, the bottom space on the staff. We also have our uh, my mid floor tom, so it's actually my 14 inch floor tom here, which is the second space from the bottom of the staff. Then if you look below, you'll see my dynamic pattern, which really is just a couple accents that I'm using. Uh, definitely an accent on two, where I would normally put my backbeat, so I'm going to accent that right. Then I have a right here that falls, uh, you know, right before I go back to my snare drum, I do an accent on the hi-hat. And then I have my left hand here, which falls on this floor tom, and my left hand here that falls on the floor tom. It's kind of nice to accent your floor tom next to these uh, bass drum marks. It just, you know, since these are such close fundamentals as far as their tone, uh, creates a really cool shape when you accent your floor tom with your bass drum. So guys, there's the notation for our quick lick. Now we're going to be taking this notation and translating it back to the drum set using two steps. And remember, this foot right here is actually the foot on the following bar. I just wanted to point that out. This foot right here is not necessarily part of the sticking pattern, but we're going to include it when we play our sticking pattern. It creates a really nice flow uh, when you see it all together. All right, guys, let's head back to the drum set and start translating this notation. All right, guys, so now that you have a better understanding of the notation from the whiteboard, let's take that notation and translate it back to the kit using two simple steps. So before we get started with step number one, I just want to mention it might be good to spend some time with the sticking pattern. So remember, the sticking pattern are the specific right, left, and foot patterns from the whiteboard. Spend some time memorizing that sticking pattern so that when you apply that sticking pattern to the drum set in step number one, it won't be as frustrating because you'll have the sticking pattern memorized. So as far as knowing which hand is playing what, it'll be easier if that sticking pattern is memorized. So once you're hip to that, go to step number one, set your metronome to 50 BPM, nice and slow. You're going to apply those 16th note triplets with the sticking pattern, starting on beat number two, continue it through three and four, and then you're going to crash on one of the following bar. 
Also, remember, you're going to be applying the, the correct dynamic pattern and voice pattern that we talked about on the whiteboard. So we're trying to get all those aspects into step number one. This helps us to try to get this lick quickly. And that's the whole point is to get you guys to, you know, a real application of this lick quicker. All right, so I'll demonstrate this for you guys. Remember, it's nice and slow so that you can really watch my voice pattern and dynamic pattern as well as my placement of this lick within the bar. All right, check it out. You're going to bump your metronome up to 70 BPM so you challenge the speed of the lick. We're also going to be applying this lick to more of a practical application. So that would be with a groove. So basically the way that I'm going to play this step is one bar groove. So four beats of a, a groove that I choose. And then I'm going to be playing the lick on the second bar. So remember, since the lick starts on beat number two, that means the beat number one of the second bar is still going to be a groove. So you'll see when I play it, when you play that second bar, the first beat is your groove. And then you start the lick on beat number two, and it continues through the rest of the bar. And at that point, you would loop it. All right, great job, guys. So there's a new idea that you can apply to your drum set. Remember, the more time you spend on this quick lick, the more freedom you'll have with your own creativity as far as changing the dynamic pattern, the voice pattern, or even the way that you move the sticking pattern around the drum set. So there's a lot of room for your own creativity to really create other options for the same sticking pattern. For more lessons like this, keep coming back to Vader.com. And until next time, peace and drums.